hey guys welcome back to my channel my name is Ruth if you are new to this channel welcome to my old subscribers I'd like to say thanks so much for always coming back to support your girl in today's video I will be discussing some tips for first-time home buyers if you are thinking about buying a home for your first time it can be kind of dreading because of the unknowns so i felt the same way when i was a first time home buyer a few years ago so when a subscriber of mine asked that i make some contents on buying home in georgia i thought it best to not limit it to just georgia because i suppose that some of my subscribers are from other states and not just atlanta georgia so the tips I'm offering, they are going to be beneficial for you, whether you are in Georgia or in the United States. So if you're interested, please stay tuned. The first tip I have for a first-time home buyer is to educate yourself about the market. Um, that involves knowing if you are in a seller's market or a buyer's market. A seller market is when there are fewer houses for sale, but there are so many buyers. So the sellers have advantage on how much they can price their houses because more people are in need of those houses or homes. Whereas a buyer market is when there are fewer buyers, but there are a lot of houses on the market. So that can be really to the advantage of a buyer you will most times have a better deal when you purchase during a buyer's market. But that should not deter you to buy your home if you have already um, planned or there's a necessity that you get a home at a particular time. So um, knowing your market is a foundation depending on where you are is it something that you are planning to do or is it something that you are ready to do and how much you can afford all of those will determine when you choose to purchase your home whether you choose to wait until it's a buyer market which there's no guarantee on what it is going to be a buyer's market or a seller market the market fluctuates you also need to learn a little bit about the neighborhood or the community that you choose to or you are interested or intending to purchase your home in is it a neighborhood with little to no crime does it have the school system close by are you even interested in it having a school system close by if you are a family person you have children of school age that might be something you will be looking for does it have um amenities close by like libraries close by to the location you are um interested in purchasing your home does it have hospitals close by does it have shopping malls close by those kind of things so you need to look into it you need to research go, go on google like put in the neighborhood and say um Maybe, for example, a uh, shopping mall close by or Walmart close by to that area. You will know like what you have close by. Or restaurants. Some people who normally eat out will need restaurants that are close by to them. So it's of easy access to them. So those are things you need to consider that you need to educate yourself about. And you also need to know the pricing of the houses in that neighborhood you want to purchase because pricing is very important. Pricing will help you know if it is within your budget or not. So you can like the community all you want and if it is not in your budget, you may not be able to purchase it. You want to go on sites like Zulu or um, Truly, those different um, mortgaging um, sites that tells you at least approximately what houses go for in those neighborhoods will give you a general idea. Most time the prices are not too far from 
what you see on those sites. So once you have gathered your information about the neighbor who you are interested in, the next thing you need to focus on now, which might have even been your first thing you will be doing is to put your um, finances together. But the reason I talk about doing your research about the neighborhood, first of all, and knowing, because if you research your price of the neighborhood that you want to potentially move to or buy a home for the first time, it will give you an idea on how to prepare now for the second step which is putting your finances together. You need to be saving some money to be able to put down to purchase your home. A lot of people, including myself, may not afford to buy a home cash down. So you still have some financial expenses to make, but at least it will be less than if you had to save for a whole house to purchase cash down. So that's the good side. But to qualify for having a home or owning a home that you did not pay for cash down, you have to put your finances in order because that's how the bank is going to see if you are qualified enough or you are able to pay back a loan that they're going to give you in order for you to have this home as your own. So you need to put some um, measure in place to be able to save some money that you will need for a down payment or you need to see if there are any kind of down payment assistance that you can qualify for. Maybe you are a veteran or you choose to purchase your home in a rural area where sometimes you have a loan that is called USDA where you don't have to put much down. Sometimes it's like 0% down. but all of those things you need to know so that's why you need to do research 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 is important you need to know what you're getting into some documents that you will need to get together as you're preparing yourself um besides you trying to save up some funds will be your tax return your w2 and you will need pay stop you're going to need um some bills payment and stuff like that to prove that you are competent you pay your bills on time and your tax return for at least a period of two years some lenders will ask for at least two years or more but two years is most times the um the minimum that they do ask for so yes you need to start gathering those documents you also need to have some copies of your bank statement. They will like to see your financial transactions and know how you spend and how much you are earning. And a suggestion that I will make personally is that if you are thinking about um, purchasing a home, you need to try to cut down on spending, on how much you are spending. You need to cut down on... Um, going and taking out loans for things like furniture or just maybe taking or buy a new car if you want to purchase a home because those things will like reduce your credit score and that's another thing i was going to make mention of you need to work on building a good credit score it plays a lot of part in how much your interest will be on your loan, how much you can qualify for, those kind of things. So your credit score, if you don't already know, it's very important, especially in the United States. Most times when you have a good credit score, it helps you, it gives you an edge on getting your loan. Even if you do not have physical cash with you, a lot of physical cash with you having a good credit score goes a long way so i mentioned earlier that you need to research and know the prices of home after you do that you need to sit and look at your income and see how much you are making and how much home you think you can afford before even venturing into applying for loan because most times when you apply for loan they give you a higher amount based on how much your gross income is. 
Your gross income is not your take home pay. Your gross income is what you earn before your take home pay, before they deduct taxes and all of that. So you want to actually budget the, your purchase of your home based on what you are bringing home, minus your daily expensive. That's the best way I can put it for a layman. Know how much you're bringing home, how much you bring home monthly that bounce into your account, minus how much you are spending on important things, things that you cannot cut out of your um, daily living expensive. You need to subtract those. The difference, then you can look at that and see how much home can I afford? And please try to stick to that range. Give yourself a low and a high range. Like how far can I go? Can I go above this limit and still pay my other bills? You need to consider those before you even go to apply for loan. Because I'm saying this, Usually, when you go in and you have applied for a loan and they give you a higher amount, you would think that, oh, well, I can be able to buy that house that I really like. Yes, you can because the bank is going to give you that loan. But at the end of the day, they expect you to pay it back to them. And whatever your monthly payment is, you don't want it to be something that you are so stressed about paying or that you can barely afford. You're not going to enjoy being in your home. You don't want to purchase your home and it becomes a burden to you. Because that's how most people get into the trap of getting into homes that they um, could not afford. And then after a few years or even less than a year, you see sometimes they lost their home because... They cannot make up of those payments. So you need to be realistic, know what you're really earning and how much you're able to spend when it comes to your other expenses and your housing. So when you're looking for homes, you there are different types of homes that are available on the market. You want to decide whether you want to live in a condo. Condo are most times homes that are built and joined together, different units joined together. Your neighbor's house is like stuck to your wall. He's, he or she is just a wall away from you. Is that where you want to live? Or do you want to live in a single family home where you have a little yard space somewhere where if you have kids or you just need your privacy, you have kids, they can have a, enough room to play around or some people the reason they choose to live in condo some condos provide like cleaning services where they don't have to mow their lawn and stuff like that some people who are aging would choose to do that instead and they rather a smaller tighter unit where they don't have to do a lot of cleaning so you need to look into your circumstances and see what do i really need what is my family condition then decide on whether you want to do that on like what type of home you want to purchase or do you want something that is really like affordable and most times condo might be cheaper than you buy a single family home but like i said you will have your neighbor like right next to you so privacy is not so much something you're going to have but if you don't care, if you're going to do all your stuff indoor, well, then that's awesome. But if you're someone who likes to come and sit outside on your balcony or something like that, or in your backyard, if you don't have a balcony and don't want people into your business, you can always like decide. And there are also options. If you choose to even live in a condo and you still need your privacy, you can build like a fence once you move there to still give you some privacy. Another thing that you might need, and I say might, because when we were purchasing our home, we did not have a real estate agent. We did not use one. We chose to fend for ourselves, look for our own home, 
and when we did do our purchase it was mostly between the seller and buyers market but that because that was when the market was progressively like booming but it wasn't there yet there were homes that you could still go and um take your time and make negotiations on so we personally did not use a real estate agent but most times especially in a seller's market you will need a real estate agent so you need to try to look for one that is local that knows about the market and that knows how to negotiate well and who is negotiating in your best interest so it's something you have to research you could ask like some neighbors or friends or families who have um, um, purchased home before ask or Google and see real realtors who have um, good reviews speak with them see if you click with them if you do not move on to the next but most times having first hand recommendation from someone you trust is a good route to go. And if you are trying to purchase a home, especially in a seller's market, you need to be prepared to make an offer. Once you see what you like, a house, a home that you like, and um, it is within your range, you want to make an offer or realistic offer. I know most times people get attached to what they see they see this home they think it's a dream home or oh, this home has everything i need or oh, this home is my dream home and they are ready to go that high for it and go to the highest bar to make an offer but you also need to remember at the end of the day once you sign that contract you're going to be stuck with that payment and you don't want something that you realistically cannot afford so you need to make an offer be ready to make an offer but also know how high you can go with making an offer so it's if you're in a seller's market most times it is a tendency to make a high offer to beat other competitors who are trying to get the same house you are making the offer on but also know your limit that is what i would suggest i would honestly say please try your best not to get attached to any house the house is not yours yet once you're still into the process of getting it it's not yours yet so do not get too attached to a house that's on the market because that's how people make wrong decisions. So try. Well, it's okay to like the house you're going to buy. But it's not the be it and end it all. There will always be a house on the market for you. There will always be something else for you. So do not be too attached to it. So that you can be able to be in the right mind to make a very informed decision. You also need to know your priorities or set your priority. You need to know what you need in a home and you need to be flexible. You need to find out like what are things that you can or cannot do without. Like us, when we were purchasing our home, I personally really wanted a garage, a house that has a garage. And that was if the house did not have a garage that goes into the house, that was a little no-brainer for me. But we did not care about having like basement or things like that. Some people will want a basement. Some men will like to have a man cave or will want to have a basement that they can use for like an investment property and stuff like that. So what are your must have in a home that if that home doesn't have it, you're not going to purchase it. You need to write those things down and know it. And what are some things that if it does not have you do not care about it like some houses may not have a balcony or a deck or something like that do you mind if it doesn't have it 
can you still go for that home some people like like open concept living space where they can see from their living room to their kitchen from their kitchen to their living room so you mind having a wall between your living room and your kitchen or is there no bueno for you you need to also know that so those little things like how many bedroom you like to have do you need guest bathroom in your home those kind of things are you someone that entertain visitors a lot those things go into place to deciding whether you choose a certain type of house or you choose to let go of certain things that the home you are looking at may have or may not have another thing that goes in line with knowing your priority is knowing if your main point is about the pricing of the house or certain futures it has so are you working on a tight budget or even if you're not working on a tight budget you may have money but it doesn't mean you have to spend all on a house so um are you looking at a certain price range or are you looking at amenities that the housing or that neighborhood provides for you and once you have found out those information about your likes and dislikes and your neighbor who you want to choose to purchase your home in and you have a realtor or you choose to do your own market research on your own, now you need to um, try to apply for loans and see what you are qualified for to know how much you are able to actually be able to buy. So you will have to get those documents handy now like i may mention earlier after you have prepared them you have them ready so that once your lender requests them it's available because you don't want to start the process and then once they start to ask you for like some bank statement you don't have it some bills you don't have it it's pretty frustrating because it's a lot that goes into making this purchase Another important thing that comes into purchasing a home is your source of income. Yes, having money is one thing because I know sometimes some people may have assistance from families to purchase a home. There is a limit on how much families can assist when it comes to purchasing your home. And even with that, it's not something they can just go and withdraw money and just give it to you. Um, they will have to make a note or a letter that proves that they are assisting you and also shows show proof that they earn that money as well. And you as well as you are saving, make sure that your actual income, a tip that I would suggest, if you are getting funds from families to um, spend on your purchase of your home i would suggest that you use the funds for your daily expensive and keep or save your actual income that comes from your source of employment because that is what they are looking at when it comes to income you're going to spend on your down payment especially it needs to be funds that you have earned it cannot be funds that a friend gave you I did not know that when we were going into um, purchasing our home. So you need to know all of that. You need to have phones that um, are from your pay stop. That's what you need. And if someone chooses to give you some phones, they have to document it. You need a proof that was given by this person. And that um, phones also need to come from a legit source from that person. Another tips for first time home buyers is when it comes to applying for loan you can apply to multiple lenders but you have a time frame when it comes to whether your application affects your credit score because if you are checking your credit score multiple times in different time spans it will does affect your credit score and that is why at the beginning of this video i made mention that you need to cut down on expenses on um buying stuff on credit 
like going to buy furniture on credit every time they you purchase something on credit they do pull your credit score so when it is done with outside of a 30 days period it does bring down your credit score and when you're buying a home you do not want to mess with your credit score you want to keep it as high as you can so um it's okay to research and to good lenders and have multiple options when you are um trying to buy your home whether you're a first time home buyer or a multiple time home buyer you need to do that within a time frame most times it is best to do within two weeks to a month within at least a 30 days period doing that will exempt you from having your credit score reduced or affected and you need to know what type of loan you want to apply for there are four types of loans you have conventional loans you have fha loan you have usda loan and va loan so va loan is for veterans those who have worked with the united states army they do qualify for that loan most of the time to get some assistance and most of the time from some research i made just out of curiosity they are giving very low down payment or sometimes zero down payment because they are veterans they have fought for this country and so that's their benefit that is a form of appreciation to the veterans and you have the usda loan say you choose to purchase a home in a community that is in a rural area you don't care about living in a big city and you just want somewhere quiet to stay and enjoy your life you know enjoy your new home people who choose to purchase home in rural areas to have that available to them you have to google and see if your particular state or community falls or your intended state or community provides the usda loan like which parts is covered by the usda loan so you can research that and once it falls within that you can always apply to see if you do qualify for it but there are some things about the usda loan that are kind of restrictive and i will talk about those different types of loan in another video so that this video is not so long but i just have to throw it out there that those are loans available to you you have the most common type of loans that people use are the fha loans and um the conventional loans so most times for conventional loans you need to have like five percent put down and for the fha loans sometimes it's like 3.5 percent or lower so like i said i will make a separate video and go dive really into it and you know why i chose to do that so when you're purchasing a home you need to have some funds saved not only for the home purchase the down payment you also need to have some funds at least for emergency in case something happens when you move into your new home you do, do not want to spend all your money on um the home purchase and you move in there is a situation and you don't have money to um deal with it you want to have something save up it does not have to be a lot of funds because um that's a question some people uh, see or even i had do you need to have like a lot of money to purchase a home no like i mentioned earlier you just need to know your budget see what kind of market it is is that market right for you and um have some funds at least for your down payment depending on where you're purchasing whether you fall on the usda or whether the usda really even makes sense for your future plans that is why i said i'm going to make a separate video on the types of loans you could get so having some funds even if it's like a thousand dollars 
or higher it's good to have some emergency funds another thing to consider is do you want to buy a new construction home or, or an older home you need to decide on that and things to consider when um choosing whether to buy a newer home or an older home are sometimes older home will need some repairs are those repairs within your budget and there will also be unknown repairs that you do not identify when you are purchasing even if you did an inspection on that home there are some things that would definitely be missed so are you prepared do you have phones lying down somewhere where in case you move into that home and there is a situation that you, you are able to take care of it and if not is buying a newer home a better option for you to give you some yourself some time to be able to live in it for a little while before major issues starts to pop up those are things to consider so yes um those are some tips that i have for a first-time home buyer if those tips were helpful to you leave it down in the comment section and if you have any other additional tips that you think will be helpful to someone who is a first-time home buyer, definitely leave it down in the comment section. This channel is here to impart knowledge, um, to learn, to grow, to motivate, to inspire. So yes, if you have suggestions or more other contents you'd like me to make, definitely leave it down in the comment section and I am going to make time to um talk about it put in my two cents like what i know about it yeah thank you all so much you guys for your love and support to all of you who come on here to support me i really do appreciate you all i don't take it for granted i really do appreciate you all and i am continuously going to do my best to bring out content amazing content to you guys to keep you guys entertained, to keep you guys informed. Yeah. So until next time, you all have a very great day. Bye for now.